when anyone asks me, who's your favorite composer? I say, you know, my real favorite composer or Elgar. Because you can't have Elgar as your favorite composer because people think he's stuffy and Edwardian and the guy that wrote that music to which everybody graduates. But the last great romantic composer, absolutely tortured man, a uh, Catholic growing up in Edwardian Protestant England, always at cross purposes, son of a piano tuner, but with this great natural gift and got to be friends with the future King Edward VII, but still a piano tuner's son. And that tug and that pull. And when his wife died, so did his creativity. He just stopped. This is 91.5 Classical KUSC, the member-supported broadcast service of the University of Southern California, home with the USC Thornton School of Music. Jim is known for being the authority about classical music and particularly classical recordings. When we ask people, who are some of the announcers on KUSC, the very first person mentioned is Jim Shveda. He is a walking, talking encyclopedia. Um, his knowledge of music and history um, is unparalleled. He puts the performers the composers in a light that makes them human, not historical documents. And he brings them to life. He makes them fallible. He, he, he tells you about these people, warts and all. I'm an orchestraholic. I believe that the symphony orchestra is mankind's greatest achievement. A gigantic handmade machine with no inventor whose object is doing nothing except arguably making you happy. What I found in Jim was not only a kindred spirit, but arguably the most knowledgeable classical DJ in America. The magic of radio is that at least half of it is the audience, at least half of what it actually is and does is the audience. You know, they really feel they're part of it in the sense that you're their friend. And you are. Because, you know, it's two in the morning and it's just you and Bach and the lady in Glendale. Jim has been able to have a remarkably successful career without having ever opened his mouth. Jim announces like this, and it works. <laughs> mellifluous, Jim Schrader has a mellifluous, comforting, intimate, breathy, um, seductive, inviting. He know Jim Schrader knows how to work the mic. Um, his voice is hypnotic, I think. Uh, and, and when he's interviewed me in the past, um, sometimes I'm lulled is the wrong word, but I'm so kind of entranced by the manner of his speech that when it's time for me to answer his question, sometimes I forget uh, what he's asked me and I kind of stumble and fumble. There's always a warmth and a smile behind what he's saying. And I think that's what the listener feels and reacts to. The thing that set me on my path and the thing that still interests me today, it doesn't get boring. It just doesn't wear out. You know, pop songs, you listen to them for three or four weeks, then they disappear, and 10 years later, they're on an oldie show. And then 30 years later, they're the songs that your kids make fun of you for liking. I think it would be possible to learn all there is to know about rock and roll. I think you could, because with minor variations and subtle changes in the surface details, it's basically the same thing, you know, with different lyrics, different kind of performances and stuff. Serious music is something entirely different. 
I mean, it's not that it's better than. It's, it's a difference in kind, not degree. I think a lot of people are going to remember Jim Shveda as the person who helped them learn about classical music. He introduced them to it, he helped them love it, he helped them learn something about it, and he helped them make classical music a part of their life. He sort of single-handedly institutionalized music over the airwaves and educated an entire population of this city over more than 40 years, you can get an education, and I have gotten an education, simply by listening to him for 40 years and doing very little else. There will be several generations in Southern California who will have in common that they had evenings where they learned something new and exciting and they were introduced to a new performer or a new composer, and it was because of Jim Schrader. He will become a sort of touchstone for for generations to come, the voice of classical radio in Southern California and beyond. When I perform my music, I'm always thinking of what am I trying to say? You know, what, 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 how can I say this through the notes? Jim says his music through his mouth. You know, part of the job is to kind of explain and explicate and point out this and that, when ultimately the whole thing is this baffling mystery that I understand less now than I did 40 years ago. 40 years ago, I understood everything and understood exactly how it worked and who everybody was. And now, it's just this wonderful confusion. I mean, I know what notes working alongside other notes do and what they're supposed to do and who did it better than somebody else. But the core thing is so mysterious. It's just something you can't talk about because it's an irrational art. It's not rational at all. At the heart of it, it's a mystery. I mean, it's, it's like God. It's something that's not fully knowable because we're not there yet. This wonderful French lunatic composer, Eric Satie, who said, people kept telling me when I was young, you'll understand. And I said, now that I'm old, I understand nothing. And it's wonderful. <laughs>